Before getting into today's episode, we'd like to thank Mac Performance PT for sponsoring the Walk On Pod. For more on their services and contact information, click the link in our Instagram bio where you will be led to their website. Mac Performance PT, helping Sacramento athletes live life without limits. Thank you for tuning back into the Walk On Pod. Uh, and yes, I, I'm Luke Dolovich. To my left is James Ball, below me is Jared Waters, and I know it's supposed to just be us three this week, but we are bringing you a very, very special guest, um, back-to-back weeks. Uh, if if you grew up and played basketball in the Sacramento area, around the same age as Tommy and I, you definitely know who this is. Um, you know, I, I he went to our quote-unquote rival in high school, uh, ended up having a really big-time college career, and uh, now he's doing big things, at, at, and I'm going to let him kind of talk about it when he gets to it, but uh, we have our man Jace McCain with us today. And uh, we couldn't be more excited for him to be here. So thank you, man. Oh, man. Yeah. Appreciate y'all this is an exciting you. episode. This is an exciting episode. Hey, man, I love the gas, man. I never get gas like this. Making my heart warm. <laughs> hey. pause, pause that if I need it. That's good, man. Hey, look, yeah. That's what we're here for, about man. It on here. We don't want you to be humble today. You know, we're going to have you for about an hour or so. You yeah. can pump your tires. You can, you can do whatever you want. And oh, we're going to let it fly. Just, just so go back to seventh, seventh grade Jace at the lab. Prime 916 select days. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> Say less. But, yeah, it's your floor. Go ahead and, uh, okay, you know, me. take the story wherever you want. All right. So, I'll start it from the beginning. You know, born and raised in Sacramento, man. Uh, best city in the world. I feel like I'm one of the, the main people from SAC that I constantly gas Sacramento wherever I go. So, like, bro, out here, I'm telling people, like, man, Sacramento's underrated, man. Grassroots basketball. <laughs> Everyone's always like, bro, who who y'all have? But they don't know, man. They don't know. But, uh, yeah, so born and raised in Sacramento. Um, uh, middle school, I went to Sacramento Country Day, and that's where I met Jared Waters, man. Got some training in with him, man. Great trainer, by the way. Get with him for sure. Um, but yeah, so I met I, I go to Sacramento Country Day, meet David Ankrum, and that's where I end up going uh to high school as well. And so high school was was an interesting experience there. There's only like a hundred people total in the whole high school. So the class is very small. Uh no one, even people in Sacramento have never heard of Sacramento Country Day. Uh, but you know, we won the section there my freshman year. Um, don't ask me what division it was. <laughs> <laughs> the banner solo. That's all that matters. Hey, the banner. Yeah, that's yeah, it. Hey, I got a ring too. It's a ring pop. There you go. It's a ring pop, but you feel me? It's, it's a ring. Uh, but yeah. Um, a ring pop. <laughs> so yeah, go there my first two years of high school. Um, you know, have success there, but I definitely want something bigger and better. Pause that for the listeners if we need to, man. Um, but so I, I, we end up going to, or I end up going to Folsom and that was a big move because like, I've kind of been sheltered with my schooling, not necessarily outside of school, but with schooling specifically, like, you know, I'm with these people that take education super serious. And then I go to Folsom and it's just like, whoa, my eyes open up to a lot of new things. And, uh, it, it was a great move. Coach Wall runs an elite program over there. I feel like in Sacramento, man, one of the, one of the best. And then that's where I crossed paths with, uh, Luke, man, and we had some wars. Um, so my junior and senior year, uh, play at Folsom and have two great years. Uh, Luke, I want to ask you something though. Did you ever think you guys were gonna beat us when we would play, y'all? Your your junior year, my senior year at our place, I thought we were gonna get you. That yeah. it was close. It was close. It was close. That was a close game. But I'm I'm not gonna lie, bro. This is not the toot Folsom's horn. I never thought y'all could beat us, so I'm not gonna lie. I mean, but at the same time, I would expect that out of, like as a competitor, uh-huh. you're not gonna be like, yeah, no, they they're gonna get us that year. You know yeah, what I mean? So, so it's like, y'all had a solid team though. But Jared, what you you think? Did you ever think that Vista was gonna get us? Uh, there are some variables that uh, if they could have been different, then I think uh, I think they would have beat you. They had they had enough talent to beat you guys, but but at the one thing they didn't have is they just didn't have somebody to to deal with Mason. Yeah, that was really that's like, that's problem. Really, like yeah, like that was that was it. Even though Mason was supposed to be a Vista Eagle, 
for uh, really? Ooh. I don't know that story. That's, yeah. that's a whole. That, that's a whole. That's off. That's off the pod <laughs> story. <laughs> but, yeah. I don't know if that rumor was supposed to be leaked, dog. That's, that might <laughs> yeah, get it, trouble, that's, That could be an exclusive right here. I don't know. <laughs> uh, uh, no, I think the other thing too is like um, the funny thing about that is, um, Jace. I don't even know if you know this because Luke has talked about us on previous pods, but uh, Luke was gonna go to Folsom originally. He played FIBA like the whole time. Mm-hmm. And then he chose to go, not go there. And I think like Wall was so good at preparing that he just knew how to like make it tough for Luke and Will and like Grant because he just like grew up coaching those kids. You know what yeah, I mean? That makes sense. So, but, right. I need to go back and watch that film. I'm not gonna lie. I wonder what those. I can't really remember too much, but I remember they were good games, man. Uh, they, were, they were always fun. I'll say that they were always. Yeah, fun. they were always. We'll <laughs> chalk man. it up to that. <laughs> And we had, man, we had, yeah, the, the city was on fire when we would play, bro. The city would just stop. It would freeze. I'm guessing. <laughs> it's crazy. We'd have our parents the battle, in the crowd, the and that's battle it. Of Folsom, man. The Battle of Folsom. Man, yeah. Movie, bro. Movie. That man. was the only time that it was actually competitive. That's like what was nice about it. I don't think it. they even play anymore. I don't think they even no, play anymore. Like, yeah, he re- yeah they refused to play them. Yeah. Like, I think it was Ford's sophomore year. They beat them by, like, 70. It was really bad. It, it was. I remember it being in the student section at this. Because Ford had, like, 40-something. Yeah. He had, like, 42 or some crazy. Yeah, he had, like, colors. 30 in the first half. Jeez. Oh, my gosh. As a sophomore, it's crazy. Damn. Yeah. Anyways. But, yeah, no, that Vista-Folsom rivalry is very similar. I like to compare it to the UNC-Duke rivalry. You know, very, very similar. That's level. crazy. <laughs> <laughs> bad take, bad take. Uh but yeah, uh, so my junior year, that's when I started feeling uh, like some health problems. Like I, I felt like I had a health problem. Um, back then, they called it myocarditis with my heart. Um, fast forward to college, they end up finding that it was blood clots. So I pr- I had blood clots all that time, um, which in blood clots in my lungs. So that that held me back a little bit, uh, just with conditioning and being able to go up and down. So I sat out like I think ten games my junior year. And then senior year, I, I never really felt 100% either. Um, like, I, they, they gave me an inhaler, and that was supposed to help me, but I really didn't um, feel like myself for those last two years and my freshman year of college. Uh, but back to high school, um, I played – so my junior year, I ended up trying to play <laughs> – trying to play EYBL. Uh, and, I mean, it was a great experience. opened my eyes to a lot. Uh, but you know, I was like a borderline, maybe division one player, D2 player in that range. And like EYBL is, it's, it's a hard place for someone like me to shine. Like, you know, these, these coaches are, are in there like Duke, like we would have, uh, I played with Marvin Bagley on, in the, on the EYBL circuit and, uh, we would have Duke, Michigan state, Kansas, all the head coaches at our game. And I'm like, I'm not going to get recruited by those dudes. And so it just didn't make sense. And so. I ended up uh, playing with Lake Show my the rest of the summer. And that's when, you know, my name started buzzing around the D2s, man. I felt like a D2 five-star out there, man. Uh, <laughs> but, uh, no, I, you know, I had I, I got some options, got some offers. Um, and, you know, I ended up choosing San Marcos. And then uh, San Marcos' career, my original freshman year, I had, uh, that's when they discovered the blood clot. So I had to sit out the whole year. I had blood thinners. Um, and then I had, uh, and then I only played two years after that because COVID, um, we were one of the only conferences to not play. So we didn't play at all, just sat at home. Um, and, you know, that's uh, that was actually a blessing in disguise because I got to really focus and, and lock in with Jared. And that's when Jared took his biggest steps. Uh, but yeah, I played my, the uh, remaining or no, I played three years total. My bad. I don't even know my own story, dog. Uh, <laughs> yeah, I ended up. I ended up playing. Uh, uh, yeah, three years total. Um, yeah, I had a great experience at at San Marcos, and it it was perfect, man. That I got. It was only so my family ends up moving down to Southern California my original freshman year, and that's uh, in Corona, and that was only about an hour away. Um, from San Marco. So it was perfect. I could go home whenever pretty much and, and be with my brother and my family. Um, and so that was a blessing. Uh, but yeah, um, I had a great career there. And then I ended up getting this uh, Duke opportunity with my brother at Duke. And, you know, that's where I'm at right now. 
and, and look at the humility, man. Yeah, like this is said, crazy. Humble. No, no guess. No hey, guess. Humble. The, the sac it, get the Sacramento gas was crazy, but but then the cool. the Jace gas was real low. Was I'll like, never cool. guess myself. I can't do that. I can't. Do that. <laughs> That's our job, like you said. That's our yeah. job. Yeah. Facts. <laughs> um, but yeah, just to again, like Luke said, you are being very humble. Your, you know, your San Marcos teams are really, really good. <laughs> And you guys had some really good opportunities. I think at one point where you guys was it top five? You guys were ranked in the yeah, nation. We were or top it... five. Yeah, we won our conference. Uh, we were the number one seed in in the uh, in, in our the West region. region. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah. So like you know, high level D two stuff and a lot of really good players that you played with. Mm -hmm. um, what do you think, Jace? Like kind of going back a little bit when you were doing the EYBL stuff and then decided to go to Lake Show. What did you feel was the main thing that allowed you to just kind of shine? Like, what was it? Is it just opportunity with the ball or just like being put in better situations or? It's, it's both. It's yeah. both. Uh, I think, yeah. I mean, with AAU, like if you want to get scouted, don't you can't just choose the, the best name, the EYBL. And that's where I feel like I kind of like, yeah, I wanted to play EYBL. That's the highest level. But really, if you want to get recruited, you got to, you got to be able to show what you can do if you're not playing or, or, uh, you know, getting the on-ball reps, then then there's no point. And so, yeah, I think um, that. And I also started working with a sports psychologist around that time as well. And so that really helped me propel my game, gain more confidence. Um, but, don't you know, I, I did score. I had a couple uh, – uh, twelve. I had a 12-point game and a 13-point game in the EYBL, man. That's probably my, my best basketball uh, accomplishment. <laughs> That's big time. That's yeah. more yeah. points than I have in the EYBL. So I was about to say that's the most points the whole chat has combined. It's twenty five. <laughs> that's twenty five more points than the other three people on this this call right now. Uh, um, and uh, Jason, it's kind of crazy now that I'm I'm backtracking a little bit, but I don't know. I can't remember if you're I, maybe your mom because I talked to your mom. I talked to Gina a fair amount when you were going through your hard stuff in high school. But I did you you knew that I can't remember. Did you talk to Luke's dad or no? Personally, I don't think so. Or may, so maybe I remember the, doc, I, Dr. Remember, a, yeah, yeah. Dr. A, because that's like actually who wall when it when you guys first found out and Gina found out wall called me and then I called Luke's dad and that was. Yeah. And put and that was like Luke's dad kind of, kind of we'll talked to Wall a little bit through all that stuff. But um, it's crazy how it's coming full circle now. But yeah, um, what what kind of what were some of the limitations you had? Because I remember how it was when you worked out. But obviously, I was there. So like, just for people that don't understand, and I'm not good at science. So especially even me, like, what were some of the limitations that you had? Just simple limitations. Are you not to go into about super when, when you when you when you got diagnosed when you got in high school yeah we're like oh, the yeah. things that you weren't able to do or the things that you were prevented to do is obviously you said you couldn't play but like i think it went beyond that right it was like some other things yeah i just couldn't get like you know my heart rate or i couldn't i couldn't exercise like at all um yeah and yeah that that really sucked because obviously we grow up playing and always you know exercising and so i was just yeah and i, I would get tired doing anything like going up the stairs and it was in my lungs, lungs, so it affected my breathing. Um, but yeah, once once I got blood thinners, I was I was all good. It it just sucked yeah. that I I couldn't play. Yeah, yeah, yeah totally. No, that's can't even imagine. Yeah, that's yeah, a tough bro. thing to go through. It's like one thing to roll an ankle, right? But but to like have something like that going on internally is like something yeah, that most of us sure. never think are gonna like deal with at that age. For sure. When the doctor told me that I could have died, I was like, wow, that's crazy. But like, yeah. it, it man. didn't really hit you then. It, exactly. Man. Exactly. To, yeah, it affected my still, parents more than, more than me, for sure. Right. And to like, still I'm be fine. able to put together a great, obviously a very great high school career and then an even better college career. Like, that's just a testament to you and the work, obviously. Thank like, you, super impressive, man. Thank it's you, just man. awesome. It's just awesome to hear. Like I, yeah. I didn't. I knew. I knew something. I knew you had something, but I didn't know it was that. So like, this is really, like, incredible to me. I appreciate that, man. Um, I have before I move on. I know Luke probably has a question moving forward, but what we always ask our guests because, like, obviously, I played Division Two. Tommy's at Division Two level. We've had some other guys like, and you were talking about playing EYBL and being around people like Marvin Bagley, like what do you think is one of the things that people don't realize? Cause you've been around a ton of division one, like NBA players, like now, even in your young years, like what do you think is one thing that people don't realize about that D at division two, that's like a high level. 
Yeah, I would say uh, the biggest difference would be uh, the bigs, like in athleticism. But like as far mm -hmm. as the guard play, it's like the the uh, the yeah. level of of play is is not too far um, from a maybe a lower mid major Division one guard. Um, yeah, that, that it could come down to opportunity. There can be so many other things. Um, but yeah, it's 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 not too far off. You know, obviously yeah. those guys are Division One for for a reason. But uh, you know, I felt like some of my teams could have competed with some low majors. Uh, that's why I know no D ones wanted to schedule us my uh, my junior and senior year. Um, but yeah, it's it's high level basketball. It, it probably doesn't get the respect that it, it deserves. But you know, it's it was elite and it was perfect for my situation as well. Yeah. Yeah, totally. well, and on that point, so you, you look at someone, like, we're talking Sacramento area basketball, Ty, Ty Roberts, yeah. who was listening, yeah. was in the same conference as you, I think uh, there's, what, one or two years crossing yeah. over, yep. and he went on to be in all-conference guard, and in, I think, Pac-12, he was either close to all-conference or all-conference. He's WCC, honorable he mention all... in Pac-12, yeah. and then he definitely made second team WCC, WCC, right? yeah. Yeah. So, no, I think he he was first team my year. Was he? Year, oh, so, okay. Yeah. Nice. Him and Khalil first team. So, like, you're talking my bad, about <laughs> two, like, we're talking about guards in the same conference that, like, that's a matchup on a nightly basis in the CCAA mm -hmm. that went on to. Yeah. And Khalil know, like was said, a Division so, two guard. Khalil was, was a Division yeah, two guard team. first. He went to Central Washington. So oh, I think yeah. That's, yeah. Yeah. It, so. It's easy to say, like, oh, yeah, watching it, like, the guard <laughs> play and stuff, like, the margin isn't that much, but, like, that is actual proof right there. The, yeah. the, the, the margin really isn't that far um yeah i want to ask you people two, that know hoops they, they oh, know bad, that yeah. yeah yeah no i think you're 100 right oh no you're good did, did i cut out did you hear me no nah, you're good you're okay. good yeah. I, I was rambling no you're good uh, <laughs> so i i wanted to ask you uh during the time when you had to sit out going from high school to college that i mean i i chose to take a redshirt year after my senior year in high school going into freshman year of college and I remember my feeling of like watching the team play and and oh man like I know I can make a difference but like I gotta wait my turn like I know this is gonna help me out in, in the long run long run and all this but that was all in my control you have stepped into a completely different situation where mm -hmm. I'm sure you could have had huge impact on your team knowing the player you were coming out of high school and you had to wait your turn for reasons that were completely out of your control what was your mindset to stay locked in and focused knowing that your time was going to come and you were going to have the lights on you when it was you know when your number was called for whatever reason yeah it was hard at first like I feel like I was very negative at first like I was thinking like should I quit should I just get into something else um, also during that time like I didn't know if I was going to be able to play again um, because they didn't know what the what the cause of it was it, they still don't know actually um, but yeah, so I like it was hard for me to wrap my mind around like maybe I won't be able to play for the rest of my career. Um, but then once once I kind of got the, the green light to go ahead and go ahead and play again, um, it was just like I I'm not going to take this for granted ever again. You know, I'm going to work my butt off and uh, do whatever I can to, to help my team win and, you know, have individual success as well. Do you think. Yeah. Um... Do you think that type of mindset and uh, approach to the game rubbed off on your teammates at all or resonated with the locker room? Because uh, I know if someone like you was in my locker room and, like, went through all that and had the same story, I'd be like, man, like, what am I wasting this rep for? Like, I need to bust my ass every single rep because yeah. if Jace was – if Jace is here working his ass off just to get back on the court, like, what am I doing? You know what I mean? No, uh, for sure. I I mean, maybe, maybe subconsciously or maybe, like, they never explicitly told me that – that but like I feel like I feel like that, that probably had something to do with you know our success the last couple of years because I ended up being um a team captain so obviously you know players looked at me as some type of role model um but yeah yeah I feel like possibly I'm not sure if, if they would say that admit it maybe <laughs> maybe they would I don't know I think <clears throat> I think that yeah I think it's like it's just like a subconscious thing it's not necessarily something that somebody always like mentions but I don't know like you're you're like a pretty like again we're we're uh we're give you know we're gassing you because you won't gas yourself like when you walk in a gym it's pretty like we know you're in the gym you know what i mean like the type of energy and that you bring to the gym it's like so if you were walking in getting a workout in it's like okay like jace is working out like we need to like step it up kind of thing i would like to so, think that 
Yeah. <laughs> I, I know that. I know that. I know that for a fact. That's, uh, I was, I mean, I guess we could ask a, a former walk on pod guest too, right? ZP would know. Yeah, yeah ZP, ZP would know. There yeah. Go. So yeah. definitely oh. ask ZP. Yeah, shout out ZP, man. I love that's my dog. Guys. That's my dog, yeah. man. Yeah, we had to get hey, after yeah after Jace left me on red, we had to get ZP on on, <laughs> on it. I did not leave you on red, dog. Come on, I never got that's... I never got the question asked. <laughs> he thought you were just a fan, hit him, you know. Yeah, man. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> oh, this that's is actually crazy. this is actually a really good segue into my next question. A lot of people don't know this about Jace, and I'm sure he had no idea I was going to ask him about this. I want to talk about Jace McCain, the the sports media journalist. Um, there was a time there where I remember mm. you used to always tweet out things about your brother or like different commitments and stuff, and it got a lot of traction. I, I kind of want you to touch on that. You know, as as new media members here at, at the Walk On Pod, we just kind of want to know how you gained some momentum in that field. That's funny. I had no idea where you were going with that until you like <laughs> back tweets and stuff. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, so during that time, I just wanted to pretty much just gas my brother and get some traction for him um, because during COVID, you know, he had he was top twenty five coming out of or his freshman year he was top twenty five and then COVID hit and then his name kind of like. It wasn't making any noise. Um, and so during COVID and while, you know, things started picking back up, um, I just tried to gas my brother as much as possible. <laughs> it, it ended up working. Like, yeah, some of those tweets got a bunch of views and likes. And, you know, I like to think that that helped uh, get his name out there a little bit. Um, but, yeah, it wasn't it wasn't anything uh, too serious. But it, it's not something that, you know, maybe in the future that I wouldn't mind getting in. Like, I just love watching any types of hoops, man, any level of hoops. So, yeah, maybe that maybe that could lead me into that career later on in life. Yeah, man. No, I remember, I remember like, scrolling on my Twitter feed, and I'd see one of your tweets, and, like, it would have a lot of, like, engagements and stuff. And I'd be like, yo. I definitely remember real, seeing those, like, too. I'm not going to lie. Yeah. Hey, it reached everyone, dog. Yeah. No, hey, it's a hey. thing. Yeah, hey, J- Jace was the king back in the day. Like, that was that was Jace's thing back in the day. Oh, my brother's gonna be better than me. My brother, <laughs> <laughs> my brother's gonna be the best. He's gonna be the best out of everybody. Like, he's gonna be nice. I was like, you used to tell me that when he was walking around and you couldn't even see his face. His hair was so big. Uh huh. It, it, I feel like that was it was obvious because yeah. he just got to be around like all you know elite yeah. basketball players since a young age, and and he was yeah. always the, the littlest. So. Yeah, no, that's that's yeah. funny because I remember you said that. <laughs> mm-hmm. That's hilarious. I think I have a I have a random interjection. I was going to bring it up earlier. Uh, this is this is back to the conversation we were having when we first started about Chase and I playing each other. We actually played each other when you were at Sac Country Day. I don't know if you remember that, bro. Okay, I knew we played Vista, but I could not remember you from that game. Yeah, it, no, that's fine. That's not any disrespect. <laughs> I don't remember anyone. I don't remember Jared, anyone. Jared likes to talk about Luke being five foot six all the time. Yeah. So, oh, I, 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 oh yeah, you, me, my junior, because I was a junior that year. He I looked like a little completely, child. yeah, completely unrecognizable to the Luke that yeah. you ended up knowing when you were at Folsom. Really? That's <laughs> yeah. crazy. Dog. But I do remember we lost. Oh, geez, this was a heartbreak. It was in the yep. semifinals of the Folsom. Oh my god, I was so mad. And one of our teammates missed a wide open layup for the win, yeah. literally. Yeah. Um, yeah. Literally. <laughs> it, was, it was a tough Lose, one. Losing to that country day team, y'all had to be pretty bad. <laughs> we were actually decent that year, too. That was here. They beat enough. Capital. They beat, beat Capital, Capital playoffs that year. Wow. What? And only lost oh, to Manteca in the state. Hey, so Manteca won state that year. That was a big win for us. Damn. High yeah. highs and low lows. That was Dude. a quad one win for you, right? <laughs> <laughs> I thought, Shoot, man, I'm not gonna lie. I thought y'all was weak. Country Day had at least one quad one win that year. Yeah, yeah. Hey, we played Folsom <laughs> that next game, bro. Couldn't even get the ball past half court. No, oh, that was bad. I remember. Run and jump, baby. <laughs> a lot Run of us had those jump. problems. A lot of us didn't yeah. have those problems. <laughs> No, I, I remember yeah, that. You. I remember that whole tournament. That was nice. it was you, Rick, and uh, ask you, BJ, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah BJ, yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 I mean, if we would have stayed there all four years, like we would have been. So I mean, we would have, we would of course won uh, Division Six sections every year. But <laughs> <laughs> I think they're five now. I think they moved up. They're five. Oh, we moved up. Hey, that's, there we probably, go. that's what we did. That's what we did. So you know, baby steps, yeah. <laughs> baby steps. Yeah, exactly. Uh, <laughs> so going from high school we talked like you okay so 
Sac Country Day, you were winning championships. Folsom, you won championships. You go to San Marcos, talked about you were a winning program, uh, you know, nationally ranked, did really well uh, in your conference, all of that. And now you're with Duke, who, I mean, it's one of the blue bloods. Everyone knows Duke and what they're famous for. What is there anything that, you know, sticks out to you across your journey that you feel like resonates with you as a winner? Like, okay, this is what is a part of a winning program at any level that's going to stick no matter what level of basketball is being played. Yeah, I think uh, chemistry is, is really is really everything. Uh, each of the teams that I've I've played for, um, I feel like I was always really good with getting everyone connected and making everyone feel comfortable and valuable. And uh, that's something that I've seen across all all levels, all you know, all the destination I, I've been to. Um, yeah, just being comfortable with your teammates, actually like feeling love for your your brother that you compete with and like willing to do anything to win and to see him win. Um, yeah, that that's I would say that's the biggest thing. I like that. I like that a lot. And I mean, uh, we've talked about it on here too. Like I think a lot of the teams that other people on the pod have talked about they've talked about how close they were both on and off the yeah. court and like Every i know time. the good team yeah the good teams i've been on it's the same way and so like i think that's definitely a, you know a, a decisive factor for sure no that's huge definitely. so speaking speaking of that and luke kind of brought up like obviously you've seen some high level games and been a part of some high level games this year what um uh, and uh luke you and tommy you can correct me if wrong i've never been to cameron indoor what what is ever what is the pressure like for for you know you guys as a staff uh in that situation whether whether it's like a game against North Carolina or if it's a game against you know one of the preseason games like being in that environment what does that feel like for you because you're you know sitting right there courtside yeah I mean Cameron is it's a movie every time bro it doesn't matter if we're playing a division two school or you know North Carolina like it's going to be uh, a crazy environment it I don't I think it's it's up there. It's probably number one between there and Allen Fieldhouse, uh, Kansas's home home arena, uh, with like the best environments in college basketball. Um, but yeah, I mean, there, there's definitely pressure. I, I I don't consider myself part of the coaching staff, but uh, like I would say, like there's definitely pressure from for the coaches and the players. But when you prepare the right way, like that pressure, it, it a lot of that pressure gets taken off, and I feel like. Duke does an elite job with uh, preparing the players and the coaches prepare so well, and we know exactly what's coming and, you know, what, what to do in specific situations. Yeah, I think that's, good. It, that's yeah. And, and I want to, a lot of casual basketball watchers just kind of like see a name like Duke or Kansas or North Carolina or whatever it is and not understand like what you're talking about, like mm -hmm. what goes right. into just winning a single game. It doesn't matter who's coming in. And especially a name like Duke, like even if it is a Division two team coming into Cameron, you're going to get the best game them. that they're going to yeah, play get... that entire year. Like, and so yes. there's so much more that goes into it than just showing up and being Duke. And so, yeah. Spoken like a true no, coach. The, the preparation. No, for sure. The preparation is really <laughs> Like, uh, I mean, at the Division two level, we prepared, but, like, at, at this level, it's it's definitely magnified because you can feel the pressure, like, the stakes of each game because you know you're going to get the team's best shot, like you said. And, you know, we felt that a couple times. Um, Arkansas got us uh, when we played at Arkansas, and, like, they ended up not having a good year. They ended up not, be, not being a good team, like, you know, not even in consideration for the tournament. But, like, that game, I promise you they were a top-five team in the country, you know. <laughs> yeah. So you're gonna get every team's best shot, and like if the focus isn't there, uh, you're you're gonna you're gonna feel it the next day because because you're gonna lose because you're gonna get the best teams. Uh, I mean the best shot from that team. Yeah. What is what is one of the things, Jace? Uh, you can just talk about you know on court, off court. What's one of the things that you didn't expect that that you've realized? Um, just kind of being there, being at that level, being in the environment that you're in, being in practice every day, day in and out. I mean, you've been to a million practices, right? Mm -hmm. It's like, what's one thing that you didn't expect um, that has happened since you've been out there? Dude, there's, there's a lot. I can't think of too many right now. But one, one specific thing is just like how big the staff is and the resources that, you know, obviously Duke has over anybody else. Like we have 
we have uh, 12 managers and like the dudes, like the players can hit the managers whenever and shoot whenever, like <laughs> the managers are expected to be there if it's 2 a.m., you know, 6 a.m., whatever, midnight, um, they're, they're, they're expected to be there. And just like whatever you need, like you can, um, there's, there's a resource for it, like something, something, someone's able to help you. And I know at the division two level, like you're, you're pretty much on your own, dude. You got to get your own classes. Yeah. Your... <laughs> yeah. yeah. So that's, that's the big thing. Like just the amount of resources. Um, you know, I, I started thinking like, dang, if I had all these resources, how good could I have actually gotten in college, you know? Yeah. Um, but yeah, this, I, it, it's awesome for the athletes. Like, cause they have no excuse to not, you know, reach their full potential. Then I, I wanted to ask, do you have a favorite like part that like since making this transition from being a player to this joining this role mm -hmm. at Duke, like what's been, what's been the favorite part about that process? Obviously being on the same program as your brother, it's storybook. Everybody loves that. Like that's what we dream about. So I'm sure that's number one. But yeah, like, for sure. Besides that, besides that, what, what has it been? Um, I feel like I've learned the game like exponentially better this year than I've ever um you know seen it I, I look at the game so much more differently than I than I did when I played and it's just because I'm like I'm looking at it from a different perspective um and also like we just we have like an elite coaching staff I, I can't stress that enough like the coaching staff like every day I'm learning something new like wow I never thought of that read or that action or you know that coverage um so just like I feel like I've grown so much and I've been able to learn so much from from this perspective as a GA um that, that I didn't have when I was a player. I wish I had that. I feel like I could have been right. a better player if I thought the game, how I'm thinking it now. You're just soaking up so much knowledge every day, I'm sure. Every yeah. day. Like, that's my goal throughout the day. Like, I have to learn something new today, and it, it happens every day. I love it. Mm -hmm. And I know Tommy wanted you to take that the personal route, but I, I it's because I wanted to ask you this, too. Like, I got to watch my brother play for the first time in person this year in his college career. And it was probably one of the highlights of my year. You, how, like, is that a dream come true? Is that an understatement to say that you going through this with Jared, like it's, yeah, it's just everything you guys dreamed of. Yeah. It's, I don't think like I could have wanted anything more. Like, like this story couldn't have been written better, you know? Yeah. Um, yeah, watching him and Cameron and just on these big stages is just like a blessing. Like it doesn't get it doesn't get better, dude. Um, I get I even get emotional before. Not like I'm not I don't hear crying, but like you know I feel like wow, I can't, I can't believe I can't believe I'm here right now with my brother. Like when they call his name and he's starting and it's it's wild, dude. It's I I wouldn't want to be anywhere else. Like I had another year or two even to play college basketball. It was it was a no brainer though. I if I could be at Duke with my brother, it was a no brainer. I was gonna be there. That's super dope, man. Do you that still beat him dope. in shooting in shooting drills? You know I don't work on my game at all anymore. <laughs> <laughs> So you don't uh, jump you don't jump in there in the workouts? No, no, but I'm not he would he would definitely beat me. Uh, for the for drills. the brand for the brand Jace produces, he has to say Jared's gonna be him. <laughs> exactly, <laughs> exactly, you're absolutely right. But no, <sighs> like we last time we played once, I I beat him, but that was like probably a year or two ago, and I'll never play him again. So yeah, yeah just so smart. you can hold on to that. <laughs> yeah, that's very yeah. smart. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. Does he I call you at two a.m. or does he call the managers to <laughs> you? It's always me. It's always me. But we'll we'll get we'll, we'll usually have an extra manager, so we have you know two rebounders. Yeah, uh, yeah, to get his workouts in. Nice. Mm -hmm. Yeah. That's so dope, bro. That nice. is so dope. <laughs> like, yeah. yeah, the fact that he gets like you know two rebounders, like you can get so much better doing that. Like, I, I don't know. I, I wish if I had that, I feel like I would have been a much better shooter and just a much better player. Yeah, that yeah, makes sense, so man. So before we hop into the starting five, I think this is a, a segue question in itself. Duke is notorious for having a college basketball villain uh, each year. Is Jared McCain a, a college basketball villain right now? I would say so. And I would say it, it's more so because of how he carries himself off the court. <laughs> you know, his off the court. <laughs> I and, love yeah. it. I think he's hilarious. No, it, it's crazy, bro. Like, so many uh, old dudes are mad, like, just sitting at home, just sick. Like, he, he paints his nail. You know, the, you know, you, you could imagine, yeah. how, like, all the crazy 
Oh, um, I'm sure his DMs are just great. Like yeah, so really sickening. Good, you should you yeah. should next time like you're free, go on Twitter or X or whatever it's called now and and put in Jeremy McKay and just look at the tweets. It's hilarious, dog. <laughs> like yeah, people just like like North Carolina fans are just like oh going. man, that, yeah, I know that gets bad. But, yeah, the most absurd name calling ever. It's it's hilarious. We, sometimes we just scroll through and just laugh. Like it's, it's yeah, hilarious. that's like the dopest thing. I think that's like the dopest thing about it, Luke. I don't mean to cut you off, but like like Jared and even you, Jace. This is obviously a testament to to shout out, you know, Gina and Lance. But like you guys are so comfortable in your skin that like. This stuff like just doesn't really affect affect him on the court. It doesn't affect you like when you played on the court. Like that stuff. Like I think it's just it's awesome that uh that he could just like do what he does and not be affected. No, for sure. It, it's we definitely try to take a, a positive outlook on literally everything in life. Uh, but yeah, I, I want if you were if people were to see how I acted when I was in middle school. Oh my god! Predicted that. Jared would have painted his nails and did all the extra shit. <laughs> That's Jared, funny. can you attest to that? Yes, God. <laughs> I actually, I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna pull it. I'm not gonna like find the picture right now. But I have one of the funniest pictures of all time, and it, it look. We all know Bender. Shout out Bender. I hope he listens to this. Shout out Bender, man. Yeah, it actually Bender looks recently, like actually. it. Actually, the picture looks like Jace is asking Bender to homecoming. <laughs> They're just holding the sign next to each other. <laughs> I know what you're talking about. Yeah, that was. I, I saw it on Instagram. I screenshotted it just to have it because it looks like they're going together. <laughs> that's crazy. That's crazy. Yeah, that's nuts. You can't. You can never leak that photo, man. <laughs> yeah. Be uh, careful. Be careful. The editing yeah. team over here might get a hold of it. I don't know. <laughs> so, that's gonna be the cover. Yeah. That's gonna be the cover of the podcast, man. Yeah. Uh, hey, be careful how you uh, you know your next words here. I don't know, but yeah, man. Uh. No, like I said, I think it's a perfect segue to get into this starting five. Um, and we're, we're going to take a different approach today. So we do have Duke all-time starting five. We felt like it was, you know, perfect, especially the time of year it is right now. Uh, and we usually, when we do our snake draft, we go point guard through center. But we talked off camera. Uh, we think it's only right to do a real draft style. So we are going to be free to pick from any of the five positions in our order. We're still going to let Jace pick the order as the guest. Uh, for the draft so you can go ahead and pick the snake draft order but when it's your turn to select you can choose any position and, and i think that makes it a lot more fair yeah yeah i have, I have one question so yeah. does this draft depend on what they did at duke or their career after this duke is just as well I, I mean, it should just be personal. You take it you take mind. it however yeah, yeah however you want man. Okay, yeah. you're the gm yeah. you're the gm man. yeah yeah Okay. If if you want to put a dude that was buns at Duke that turned into nice in the league on your team, then <laughs> okay, okay. All right, let me decide this order real quick. Or vice versa. <laughs> Who's been gassing me more this episode, dog? <laughs> uh, I'll I'll go Luke because that intro was elite. I'll go Luke number one, and then Tommy. You also had a great, you know, a great. Here we great. go. So you're two. That's love. Thank you. So uh, Thank you. I'll be I'll be three in Jeremy. <laughs> wow. No, no, what, okay. a, what a nice guy. What a nice guy. I, I can't go dead last, you know. So you got to be last, huh? Yeah. Yeah. That's All right, man. I'll that's definitely kick us off. I'll definitely kick us off. Um, there's a lot of easy number one overall picks here for the Duke uh, all-time starting five, but I'm going to take my personal favorite player because he would get taken before it gets back to me. I'm taking J.J. Redick at the shooting guard. I'm taking J.J. Redick at the shooting ah. guard. Uh, he's a blueprint for shooters. He's <laughs> a blueprint selection. for podcasting. Uh, he just checks all the boxes for me. And, and growing up when I actually was a Duke fan, J.J. Redick was the sole reason why I wanted to cheer for Duke. So uh, yeah, there we go. How Never wicked died. is it going to be him and LeBron having their own podcast? Dude, I cannot so, wait for Brian. I'm I think really awesome. excited for that. Ron, Ron that clip. So he's gonna think yeah how many lie like what are the what are, what kind of tales is he gonna tell <laughs> oh, I can't even. Did, you see, there, did like... you see the clip today jared no i didn't see it i saw it but i didn't watch it he said when well, we're talking about bob not bombs over baghdad we're talking baseline yeah. out of bounds yeah, he's, like, he's, man. The what no one was thinking that <laughs> yeah oh um, he just got uh, so sick and tired of Maverick Carter, he had to find somebody else to do, yeah. do a TV show. <laughs> That's what it is. Uh, yeah, I, my, I can't. My first overall pick, my first overall pick, I'm going to go with 
current guy in the league. Um, he's he's established himself. He's a great player. I rock with him heavy. I think he's a stud and definitely gonna, could be a guy who's a face of the league future. Give me JT, Jason Tatum. Damn. Yeah. I love JT's mean, game. That's what I was he's swaggy. Nice. Nice. That's a really All good right. pick. All right. Really good pick. That was at the small one. forward, I'm assuming, Tommy? At the small forward, yes. I okay. clarify that. Right. He is my starting small forward. That was my number one on my draft. Ah, I'm sorry, no. Jay. No, no. I, you know what? I'm I'm not really worried about anybody taking in my picks because my picks are high level. Um, okay. But, uh, um, you know what? I got a – Jay. It's literally – It's not, not your turn, turn dog. What Wait, are you it doing? is. Crazy. You're I thought I was – Oh, I thought – Oh, my fault. Bro, sorry. what are you doing? You, you lose your first round pick now. For doing yeah. <laughs> For whatever reason, I thought I was going third. Brains fried. Go ahead, Jace. Uh, my bad. My first round pick. You know he's been caught up in the media and he, he his off the court antics. You know we gotta we gotta ignore. But when he's healthy and in shape, I got I got Zion Williamson, man. Mm. That that mm. one year that one year at Duke was electric. Oh my god! Y'all remember that? Yeah. Yeah. yeah, he's unbelievable. Yeah, yeah, that's a that's a big time pick right there. Zion at the four, now, I'm assuming, right? Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yes, yes, yes. Yeah. I mean, right, it's, uh, your, it's, it's your turn. Yeah, it's my turn now. All right, cool. Do I need to raise? Do the raise my hand thing again? <laughs> no, that was. <laughs> All right, so you know, Jace likes to gas sack. So I'm gonna, I'm gonna mm-hmm. gas. I'm gonna gas the seven oh seven here. Okay. This is this guy when I was in high school. I I literally thought he was the greatest ever. Uh, it was crazy to watch him play in high school. He's from Vallejo. Uh, at my point guard, give me Demarcus Nelson. Yeah, I had a feeling this was coming. People, I was thinking of that. Pe- people think he's from Sac because he finished at Sheldon, but he yeah. actually played at Vallejo. Yeah. Uh, and uh, yeah, CC Sabathia used to come to our high school games to watch him play. It's a very crazy. good pick, Jared. It's a very good yeah. pick. So that's my point nice. guard. Um, I'm gonna jump. So now, uh. I need some shooting. I need some skill. I feel like this guy was one of the one of the first like Duke tweener forwards. That's you know all the rage now. Uh, at my power forward, give me Kyle Singler. Great pick, dude. Kyle Jeez. Singler, he was the power nice. forward. I love Oregon, Oregon zone. Yeah, Oregon zone. Yeah. He was elite. Yeah, yeah, he was tough. He, he was nice. He was tough. Okay, that means I'm up next. Yep. Yep. Yeah, I can't actually, believe... don't ask me. I don't know. <laughs> Thanks. I, I I can't believe this guy hasn't been picked yet. I think he's top two most skilled players of all yeah, time. Yeah, gotta do it. Gotta do it. Kyrie Irving, man. I'll put him. I'll put I him. I mean, I'll put him at eleven one. games. That's awesome. After the we game, haven't talk, we just saw... I was gonna say we oh haven't talked gosh. about it yet. Let's acknowledge the lefty sky hook from the elbow over That's... the seven footer. Yeah. Was... What? Oh who God. even who even thinks about shooting? Dude, yeah. Did you see Luca's reaction? And everyone was yeah. like, "Luca's just happy he finally has a good teammate." Luca was in disbelief, <laughs> bro. Like, hey, hey. I could. I, I actually still can't believe that he was a sicko for that. I'm not gonna lie. He's a sicko. Yeah, like people were I saying he planned on doing that. I was like, no way did that guy no. catch the ball thinking he was gonna shoot a 17 foot left handed floater yeah. for game. His, his game is never planned. It's whatever yeah. comes to his mind. Oh, I'm gonna try some new shit right now. I yeah. saw yeah, I saw some <laughs> tweet. They're like, you go you go shoot that Kyrie shot in your workout ten times and you are hitting you are hitting the corner of the backboard or air balling eight times. Yeah, yeah. Unless really. unless you're at it unless you're at a Jared unless K I K I work out. Yeah. Jared, oh, I'm we start with airballing. lefty floaters. Jared, I'm still airballing that shot. Ah, jeez. Make your pants on. <laughs> um, all right. I'll keep the trend going. I'm gonna select the point guard here. Um this guy this guy just gets the job done straight up. Like if you want a point guard on your team that's that's gonna be elite, you take him. He's not gonna complain. He's gonna have eleven assists and no turnovers, and he's gonna win. Give me Tyus Jones. Oh, Tyus Jones at the point guard. So yeah. elite. He's not a backup anymore, but he was the best backup in the NBA. That's a really good pick. I definitely definitely had him on my uh my depth chart here. Um it's yeah, this is insane. I don't know how I'm pick number eight right now, and I'm gonna get arguably Mr. Duke basketball. I'm gonna take Christian Leitner at the center. I I I, I think we can't do a starting five Duke without having Christian Leitner in there. So let me go ahead and just take that one off the board. Yeah. Make it easy for everyone here. Good pick. Um uh, now it gets a little interesting. 
Now it gets a little interesting because I definitely did have a Tyus Jones in there. Um, okay, okay, okay. I'm going to stay historic here. I'm going to stay historic here. Uh, we're going to go to the small forward right now. We're going to say Grant Hill at the small forward. Mm, um, nice pick. I think, you know, J.J. Redick and Grant Hill on the wings is going to be pretty unstoppable. Um, so I think that's what I'm going to go with here. Swing it back okay. to you, Tommy. Yeah, good pick. My third overall pick. Yeah, yeah, I'm gonna go with this guy. This this guy was this guy was dominant. I mean, he he is 20 years younger. He's still in the league today. I mean, you get that ball on the right, either block, and he's scoring every time. Give me Jaleel Okafor, man. Oh, Give me Jaleel wow, Okafor. Nice pick, nice pick. I mean, oh my gosh, he was literally unstoppable. Mm-hmm. Literally unstoppable on the block. It's a really good pick, man. He was born uh, 10 years too late, man. Exactly. Exactly. Yeah. I think about Seriously. that a lot. I'm like, Jaleel Okafor was just 10 years earlier. He's yeah. a, he's a multi he's a multi all star. I mean, they won a championship. Yeah. 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 Like they won a championship. <laughs> it's crazy. The guy was a top three pick and then just got phased out. Because of Steph Curry. Steph Curry's full. Yeah. 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 <laughs> okay. Um, my next pick. I'm not playing the politics game, man. This guy was actually the real deal when he played. I'm going Coach John Shire, but the player John Shire. He was a, <laughs> yeah. That's the playing. definition of a homer pick right there. <laughs> hey, we're gonna ta- we're gonna tag hey, we're gonna tag him in the post just so you yeah, know. Yeah, we're gonna tag him. <laughs> he was cold there, like I remember. No, he was nice. He was yeah. really good. He, he was, was really, really good. good. Yeah, really, really good. What year was he there again? Uh, he was 2007 to 2010. Okay. Yeah. So was it with he, Singler? Yeah, I'm pretty yep. sure he played. Yeah. Yeah. They, he won, they, beat, yeah. they beat. Uh, was it, he was on the Gordon Hay- Butler. They beat Gordon Hayward. Yeah, 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 it was the Butler team. Yeah, yeah. the team that beat Butler. Yeah, Gordon. Yeah. 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 yeah, that was a good pick. Really good pick. Yeah. yeah. Um. Now, uh, I'm gonna make some changes here, not because anybody took name of players, but I think uh, now that this guy's available, I was surprised that he is, but um, he's gonna. Be a little small for the center position, but he plays big, and he's just going to be a matchup nightmare out there. Like, good luck, Jaleel Okafor. Give me Jabari Parker at the center. Nice, nice pick. He was so cold there. Yeah. Oh, my gosh, he was so nice. We've talked about him before. I did not think he was was going to be there, so I just, like, wrote him off. But now that he's there, yeah, he's going in at my center. I mean, in in college basketball, since – especially the way the game is today, you could see a Jabari Parker at the center for sure. I mean, he rebounded like, yeah, like, yeah, yeah. he was a man. out there. That's a great pick. That's a great, he, he was so nice. Yeah. Um, now throwing it back as as I am the historian here, um, small forward, (laughs) this guy was, uh, you know, early two thousands, really good Duke teams. Um, give me Trajan Langdon. Mm, Small forward. Yeah. Just more shooting. Yeah, Trajan Langdon. Nice. Nice. Yeah, is that my yeah. small forward? I'm liking these lineups. I'm liking, you know, our production team over here is keeping note of them. Okay, awesome. Yeah, Jay said, remember, we picked first. <laughs> oh, come on, now Zion. Uh, is it is my turn? My bad. Yeah, yeah. Man, I, I need some defense. I'm not going to lie. Backcourt of Kyrie and, and Shires. It's not getting <laughs> Uh, on defense <laughs> uh but you know i feel like this guy is too good to pass up and he's long enough pause um we're getting i'm getting brandon ingram man wow that is a good pick i didn't even pick pick. he was really good at duke yeah i just didn't recognize him because he had no tattoos when he went to duke and then now yeah. he's just blast. <laughs> yeah that's awesome okay good that's pick. me that's me right that's me right Yep, yep, um, yep. I got I got two positions left. Yeah, I mean the Tommy Ball pick, man. He's got to go on my list. Everybody knows it's coming. Give me the sharpshooter. Give me Seth Curry. Give me Seth, Seth Curry oh, at the that's two. A good pick. Good pick. When people that's forget Seth Curry went to Duke, man. Yeah. Yeah. When you're at Liberty, then over. Mm-hmm. I like that. I like oh, that a lot. A um. All right, I need a point guard and a power forward here. Um, I had John Shire, so I had Tyus Jones originally, then John Shire as my backup. So oh, wow. we're really, we're, we're gonna shake things up here. I'm gonna take Nolan Smith as my point guard. Nolan Ooh. Smith was a, a Duke yeah, legend, he was good. honestly, yeah. really good player. 
Um, and then power forward, I'm actually surprised that he's still available. I'm gonna take Boos. I'm gonna take Carlos Booser as my yeah, power forward. That's a good pick. Uh, and I'm really liking my lineup, fellas. I I really think that I have a dominant five here. Yeah, I'm yeah the chemistry yeah. you have between JJ and Booz, it's nice. Yeah. It is. Yeah, I've got my chemistry with Tyus and Jaleel. We needed to establish that connection on the team. Um, we need a little plug and play guy here at the four. Someone who had a long career in the league. He's a, he's a good player, man. Under underrated. Played a lot of heavy minutes for for Coach Thibodeau and the Bulls. Give me Luol Dang. Nice. Give me Luol wow. Dang. That's a good four, pick. Man. That's a, that That's a, a really, really good pick. Pill. Minutes of hell. You probably played 45 and you didn't want to play any more than 34. Guy could have played 20 years in the league. Career got cut six years. Thanks, bro. That's got to be a rough guy. To Yo, play. speaking, we've talked about this before, Jace. I don't know if you pay attention, but like this poor guy, Taj Gibson, man. They, this oh, guy, uh, Thibodeau, keeps calling him back on 10 days. I know he's been wanting to say, I'm retiring, Tibbs, but he's like, he's like, no. Taj, yeah. we need you. We need you. Yeah. Uh, one more time, coach. One more time. Thanks, thanks. Uh, all right, no, Jace, uh, Jace. Yeah, yeah. All right, to wrap it up and swing it around. Yeah, um, yeah. This guy led the team to a Final Four a couple years back. I feel like he's he's going to be one of the best players in the league at one point. Um, Hollow Ben Carroll, give me him. Oh, yeah, mm, good pick. That's a good Five. pick. Yeah. yeah. Five. Oh, that's gonna be a tough matchup. That's nice. He's a yeah. He's a matchup issue. He's a matchup yeah. problem because yeah, he can. Yeah. Really good. Yeah. Um. So at at uh, I have one more position left. I need a shooting guard, and I I need a glue guy. Um. Uh, he was really really good. Uh. On the team that he was on, he wasn't always the best player. Later in his career, his last couple of years, I think he scored a lot more. But um. Uh, he's really gonna lock up the team's other team's best player. Give me Daniel Ewing. At my shooting guard, Daniel Ewing. Nice. That's an interesting pick. You said what? An intriguing pick, man. Yeah, man. Just gonna chase JJ around. Uh -huh. Um, all right, for my walk on, I'm so excited. This might be my most excited pick. Um, I freaking um I knew nobody would think of this. Well, I hope they don't. Well, I'm gonna go first. I guess it doesn't matter. But um <clears throat> this guy had two brothers that played in the NBA. This guy had never played in the NBA. He might as well be in a walk on. But because his last name was Plumley, he had to go play at Duke. And he ended up going to the military. He's like 7'3". I don't know how you could be in the Air Force at 7'3". But, like, Marshall Plumley is my walk-on. Yeah. Marshall Plumley. Good pick, man. Yeah. Really good pick. Really good pick. Yeah. All right, Jace, walk-on pick. My walk-on pick. Um, For my walk-on pick, I am going – to go with my guy, Justin Robinson. I don't know if you guys know that name, but so he was actually a walk on. Name. He's part of, he's part of the, uh, the staff now. He's our player development guy. And he's actually David Robinson's son. Um, a great guy, man. He, and he really knows the game, but uh, he was, he was a walk on all four years, I believe, but his last year, uh, it was actually the, the, the year before COVID happened. And he was, he started frying. Like he was getting great minutes. Um, and he started frying towards the end of the year and was about to go on a big run as a walk on, you know. So that, that that's, I feel like that, that's a fitting pick. And he's my guy. Yeah, great pick. That's dope. A true <clears throat> walk on. Yeah. Perfect pick. Yep. Um, I keep flip flopping back and forth on who I want to select here. I'll go with this guy just because I'm a guard. He's a guard. So that's why. That's literally the only reason why. <laughs> this guy was awesome at Duke. Um, in the NBA for a little while, not in the NBA anymore, but great player, great leader. I think. Give me Quinn Cook. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah that's Cook, a nice man. pick. That's Leader a really baller. good pick. Homer really, pick really. Too, or no? Yeah, Homer pick for sure. Yeah, he did have his Warriors tenure. No, when they when that's they talk about that when they talk about that 2015 national championship Duke team, they always say like Quinn Cook was the reason they 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 won that because he was just such an elite leader and you know made big time shots. So that's yeah. a great that he had that same role in the NBA. That, that like he won with the Lakers, won with the Warriors. Mm -hmm. Like that was yeah. like that was like his claim to fame. Like, oh, you get yeah. Ben Cook, we're gonna get one. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> there you go. That's a good pick, man. That's a good pick. Um, all right. Man, my walk on pick. I knew no one was gonna take this. Um so let's take it back. Let's take it back to March eighteenth, nineteen eighty. Um, you know, Duke Athletics is in a little bit of a transition period here. And my man Tom Butters. 
the athletic <laughs> director for uh, oh, Duke right. Athletics at the time hires oh. Coach Shashevsky and probably set Duke on for one of the most historic uh, paths in college yeah. basketball. So give me Tom Butters, the former AD of okay. Duke Athletics, as my <laughs> yeah. <last topic. laughs> for the hiring of Coach K. Uh, <laughs> that's that's high level. Yeah. Did you think anybody was going to take that one, though? Did you think any, anyone was going to take that? So, no, but then when Jared got, like, real giddy about his pick, I was like, oh, maybe maybe he was on the oh same Oh, my God, no, I was not. No, I was only thinking Tom players. Butters. You took it to another level. And his name is Tom Butters. That's Butters. crazy. That's a fire name, though. Tom I have Butters. To, I have to shout my honorable mention out. And I don't know I don't know why he came to mind, but shout out to Emil Jefferson, man. Mm-hmm. Emil Jefferson was going to be my walk-on pick. Yeah, he, he lasted and played for a long time. I'm pretty sure he it's was on Tom. staff, too. Yeah, he was. Yeah, he yeah. he helped recruit he's, Jared as well. Yeah, he, is he, he still there or no? No, he he's on the Celtics bench now. You can see him behind oh, okay. behind Missoula. Hmm. Not Tom Butters, but <laughs> <laughs> my fault. Uh, well, good list, guys. I, I like that. That was a lot of yeah, fun. That was a great list. And now we have yeah. the most important question of the night from Jared here. Uh, Jace, I know you're busy out there, but you haven't really you don't really golf, huh, Jace? I don't, dude. Man, well, you know. Golf may not be an indoor sport, but I'm going to get 50 chips a night. So when I birdie, Cameron going to go crazy. That final four is in sight. What the? What did I just hear? What? Yeah. <laughs> wait, wait, hold up. What? <laughs> that is the best part. That's the reaction is always the best part. <laughs> let that let that marinate a little bit. Let that marinate. Jared's a poet, man. Can I hear it? I don't like that. One more. Yeah, I got you. Encore, yeah. Encore, performance. Yeah. Encore, Encore performance. Encore performance. I don't know if you're an encore. All right, so. I wasn't ready. I wasn't ready. Right. Golf may not be an indoor sport, but I'm going to get my 50 chips a night. So when I birdie, Cameron going to go crazy. That final four is in sight. I'm not going to lie. That shit's weak, Jerry. <laughs> That's good. That's pretty good. That's pretty good, man. Pretty good. Get him off the airways, man. Yeah. Starlin, man. Nah, that ain't Heard it. That ain't it. Yeah. That ain't it. <laughs> oh, that ain't it. Man, oh, man. I love it. I love it, man. Damn, yeah. Dude. And good try, though, man. That's a good hey, try. I'm, you know, I had to sprinkle a Cameron indoor in there, you know? No, oh, for that sure. Was, that was impressive. I'll sure. say that. It's fine okay. if that was a little bit too much hope for you. It's all right. Yeah, my turn. Sure. Yeah. Oh, that was good, oh. bro. Jace, bro, thank you. Thank you so much for coming on tonight. Thank you for making it work. This is yeah. this has been awesome. Jace, we really appreciate bro. you, man. We no, really appreciate is, you. Fun, thank bro. You. I appreciate even being like being on this, man. I, I didn't think I could get the invite. Come on, man. <laughs> Come on, Marble Valley days. They know about the Marble Valley oh days. My God, Jeez, Marble Valley. I don't. There's probably like a hundred people that know about Marble Valley, man. <laughs> hey, my mom was. My mom <laughs> like was ten of them have been on here. <laughs> <laughs> Shout out, uh, to, shout out to Stacy. There we go. I haven't got a Stacy shout out in in a while. Marble Valley, baby. Yeah. Um, oh, last question before. So, uh, what's up, man? You guys winning the chip or what? Is that that a guarantee? You want to hear the guarantee? Question. Never a guarantee, man. I'm not going to guarantee it, but we have a chance, man. We're, I feel like we're going to make a run. There we go. That's all we need. Heard Just need first. one chance. Here yep. first. Yep. Heard there we go, first, man. Thank you. <laughs> Love it. Once again, Jace, thank you, brother. This has been this has been so fun. So, you guys, as man. always, these are your favorite walk-ons. We're walking out. <laughs>